Welcome back to another edition of Fly Tying for Beginners with Jim Mishura. Today I'm going to tie a, a minnow fly and it's going to be an olive matuka. This is a, a good way to get a nice profile of a minnow. The hook that I have in the vise, this is a streamer hook. It is a lively legs streamer. Uh, one extra strong, three extra long, and this is a size eight. And you could tie these. This is about one and a quarter inch. You could tie these as long as heck, as long as you want. If you have some real long uh, streamer hooks, five x, six x, you could do that. But I'm going to do this on the three extra long streamer hook, and now I'm going to add some weight first. You don't need to add weight, but I'm going to add weight, and this is going to be some. I'm going to use some flat uh, lead, some flat lead here, and on the end here, it's pretty thick. But on the end here, I I squashed it down. I just used the uh, actually used the handle part of my scissors to squash it. We're just going to hold it there and start wrapping yep, maybe I'll take it this way I'll get that folded over and hold that there and then I'm going to wrap that forward it's only going to take about three turns and I'm going to stretch that and break that now I can take it and kind of get that better to the way I want it I don't want them overlapping so I'm going to kind of just stretch them to get them to not overlap if I can and that's pretty good you want to flatten those ends out there a little bit and you can see this back part how it, it's tapered off nice okay that's good enough now the thread I'm going to use, I'm just going to use an olive thread because I'm going to make an olive fly. And you could use, make these in just about any color combination that you want. A good color combination would be a black ghost that would make a nice Matuka fly. But we're going to attach our thread at the front. As always, we're just winding the thread over itself. And I want to keep that flat lead where it is. And with that flat lead, it wrapped pretty tight so it didn't move. And we're going to go ahead and go forward and back a couple of times. Just to kind of smooth it out there. On the front side here, I can see I got to smooth that taper out there a little bit. Just a little. And I'm going to bring my thread back. And we're going to stop where it would hang about halfway from the barb to maybe halfway to the point. Something like that. Now we need a rib in there. That's the most important part of the Matuka. And what I'm going to use is this is an olive uh, wire. This is a, all, a medium wire. It's not an extra fine yeah, that's what I thought was going to happen. Broke my thread. Okay, now you broke your thread and you're in the middle. Don't panic. Just re-thread it. And now you just wrap on top of that thread. And I'm going to have to trim them off. Grab my scissors here. Trim that one off trim that one off okay so I secured the wire bring my thread back now we're gonna put a body on there I'm gonna turn my uh, fly upside down because I'm going to double body on there you can use anything you could use a you can use yarn for the body you can use chenille for the body I'm going to go ahead and use some Antron dubbing 
and the Antron numbing uh, kind of has a shine to it there. The best thing I could say is it it's like scraps from a carpet actually which is probably what it is but I'm going to make it tapered it's also a little bit Antron is a little bit harder to dub on and I got myself a little bit of a tapered noodle here this should actually cover the whole the whole thing I'm going to go ahead and put this on. Nope, I've got to add a little bit more. Take a little bit more of that Antron. And in the last video, I talked to you about stretching the dubbing. Go ahead and stretch that out. And then start at the top and work your way down. There we go. This particular color combination that I'm doing will be great. It would be a great color combination for uh, spring or early summer in lakes. Where you're going to see a lot of the small panfish with fry marks and things. And I'm going to get a little bit further up there. This one kind of reminds me of probably a baby pickerel. There we go. And we're about one eye length from the eye of the hook there. Now for the hackle or the wing, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take two. These are actually called slopping feathers but actually what they are is strong saddle hackle and they're mostly the fat ones I really don't know why they call them slopping except that they're sloppy so I'm, I took two and I put them cur concurve sides together so I put them back to back and I'm going to measure what size I want and I want the let me widen this out there for you I want this uh, wing to be one and a half to two times the length of the hook shank. So I'm going to go ahead and yeah, a little bit shorter than that even. And also another thing with the with this feather, this is just like I said, these are slopping feathers, but they are actually the strung saddle. And we're going to make that about two times. I'm going to put it right there. And I'm going to, I have the, the uh, so I'm going to just pull these back so I know my length. Let me just put those on the side just for a second. And here's a good example of more of those slopping feathers. These ones are fat, fatter. You can see these are fatter. And here's a couple more, a different color. And you can see how you know these are short and fat but you can kind of use any combination like I said right here these yellow ones will make a pretty nice little uh, pan fish with that fatness there just put a yellow body on there but I'm going to take these Again, I'm going to trim them down to my to the size I want. And there we go. Kind of this, like I said, this kind of reminds me of a little perch. I'm going to cut them, trim them, and I'm going to give them the haircut, the crew cut. Doing one feather at a time is probably a better idea than the two until you get used to it. But I gave them the crew cut and they're going to be on there like so. And now what I'm going to do is that's where they're going to be and then the tail is going to be right here where my thumb is. 
So I'm going to remove the feathers from the bottom side of that hackle from there back. Now I can take them and place them on there. You can see where the hackle is removed. I'll tighten that in again. And you can see where that hackle is removed. Just line these up better. Now I'm going to take my my feathers and I'm going to tie them in. And I'm going to secure them pretty decently. Now you want to keep them with the back-to-back uh, -back size. Now I'm going to take these I'm going to hold them here with my with my left hand and I'm going to pull the hackles up. Just be careful not to pull them off. Now I'm going to take the rib and I'm going to secure them. You don't want to secure it back this way because then you're going to have your feathers going down. So you want to get it make sure that you're on the flat. And then you can kind of stroke them to the back as you're going. Get them all standing straight up. And then we're going to wind them. Wind them at an even spacing. Let me hold them. And you can open your hackle every space that you want to put your rib. Okay, I'm going to open it again. And again. And now you can see it coming better. And then one last time, right at the top there. And then I'm going to secure the wire or the rib. You can fold it back and wrap on top of it. And then I'm going to helicopter this off. Now I'm going to take, because I had such long feathers, I'm going to take one of these feathers and I'm going to use this as the collar. Now this portion, this is the tip still, and I still have these pulled back. You can see how soft they are because of how I pulled them back. I'm going to try to give this a little bit of the haircut. And there we go trim that down to the size I want. Now we're going to tie this in. Now I'm going to pull everything to the one side and we're going to give this a couple of wraps for the collar. And this very soft hackle is going to flow back very nicely in the water. Okay, that's probably about good. I'm going to hold this hackle at a 90 degree to the hook shank and wrap. Still holding tight. Wrap. And I'm going to give it maybe one more. I could let go now. Then I can go ahead and oh, stroke everything back, put a few wraps right in front of that hackle. And I'm pinning it, sandwiching it in there between the threads. I'm going to take my poke and snip and remove the hackle stem. Now what I can do is I can 
come back on it. I'm going to hold everything back. I'm going to clean up the head. But I'm also going to come back maybe one or two thread widths right there. Now you got it fl flowing towards the rear there nicely. Bring it up forward. Take your whip finish and again put the hook on it. Come around the camel hump and bring it all the way back. And now there's our X. We're going to slide our X down and then we're just going to rotate our whip finish. Take the camel hump out, slide the hook up, slide the hook out, tighten it up and that one broke but that's okay. We're going to take a little bit of the head cement. I'm going to clean it off pretty good. And I'm going to go right around with it. And my brush, I have it cut to a point there, which makes it a, a little uh, easier to put the, the uh, head cement on without getting it in the eye. Now here we have a nice olive matuka. Like I said, this particular pattern right here will be nice in, in a lake. It'll look like a baby bass or a baby uh, pickerel or something like that. But hope that you learned something from this video. Hope that you would subscribe to my channel. Please refer me to your friends. Please visit my sponsors. Let them know that I sent you. Leave comments questions suggestions if you'd like to purchase this or any flies that i make please go to etsy.com slash shop slash the flyman gym and if you don't see the pattern that you're looking for just send me a message and we'll figure it out and most of all thank you very much for watching my videos